This is the Concorde, a LEGO model that stands out above everything else LEGO released so far this year, and before telling you why, I'll just get my least favorite part of it out of the way. Its size. At over a meter in length and 43 centimeters of width, this one is rather big and makes it somewhat hard to have on display. Shelves I have around the office aren't as deep, so the wings will be sticking out a bit or the nose if I place it at an angle. A little bump when I'm walking over and it might fall on the floor. I'm guessing somebody will find a way to hang this on a wall somehow, but as it stands you'll have to have a dedicated space at home to display it securely. I'm becoming a bigger fan of smaller sized lego models that fit most spaces you'd want to display them so yeah there's that but with that out of the way oh my god is this a good lego model first of all there's only printed elements no stickers whatsoever so that's a huge win at the fin there's a brick with the aircraft's name printed on both sides on the rear fuselage this printed tile that matches the brick built red stripe leading up to another printed 2x4 tile the line continues leading leading up to yet another printed element that ends the red stripe but also has the airship's name. Above the red line there's all of these windows, right? Printed. The static port slopes? Printed. The main windscreen? Uh, not printed, but I'll talk about it in a second. The secondary windscreen? Uh, printed. And yes, that's the working droop snoot. And finally the info plaque tile that, as you're probably guessing by now, is printed. The fact that the model is so big allowed the design team to have super accurate details of the real aircraft, including the famous Droop Snoot. How do I know this? The building instructions take us on a journey explaining every significant aspect of the Concorde, which is really awesome if you're into that kind of thing. In this particular case, regular planes land like this, but the Concorde had a high angle of attack during takeoff and landing, and so the Droop Snoot allowed the pilots to actually be able to see the runway. And I can't even talk about the landing gear yet because the nose still packs a lot of stuff, namely two new elements. The main windscreen, as I mentioned before, that actually came packed in paper by the way, is not printed, but actually a new and exclusive to this set dual molded element, meaning it uses two different colored plastic materials as can be seen from the back. On top of that there's also this new cone element that matches pre-existing one, so we get the no section just right. There's another copy of it in detail section that can be turned to deploy the landing gear. How cool is that? Both the front landing gear and the back one in sync. And despite the flimsy look I'm surprised at how well it handles the weight of the whole model and how you can move it around. Not only that, seeing it retract flawlessly back into their spots is super satisfying to look at. Definitely the most impressive play feature of the whole model but not the last one. The tail section also has a bumper wheel that made it so that the plane wouldn't hit the floor during takeoff. The tail fin has the independent rudders the actual aircraft have, as well as all of the elevons by the delta wings. Next to them we get to see the Olympus engines that propel the plane at supersonic speeds and it's also a good time to mention how good looking the underside of the model is, something that isn't usually that carefully designed in other LEGO models. In the midst of all of this, a section of the cabin can be lifted, giving us a neat look at some interior details, like the seating, made out of a LEGO Technic element, or the toilets, made with some very clever piece usage and building techniques. Last but not least, the display stand, kinda giving that old 60s and 70s vibe with the brown color to represent wood, or the printed info plaque with the golden accents with lots of cool info about the real aircraft. I'm also really surprised how such a small build manages to hold a 2000 piece lego model on top of it like it's no big deal. That's something that also had me concerned prior to building the set. Since it's so big it kinda made me worry about the stability and how flimsy the body and wings would be. But as it turns out it's a super sturdy build that I have no trouble picking up and the wings aren't bending at all. And as impressive as it looked in the image 
because I had seen prior to building it, I was not expecting it to be this good of a building experience. It's really hard to describe how it felt because of how unconventional and challenging the building techniques were, in a very good way. All of these orange builds are placed but taken out multiple times through the build to provide support for the delta wing so it doesn't break. This little assembly locks the landing gear mechanism so you don't mess it up while building it, but later on also gets removed, and to make it all perfect I feel the elements should have been incorporated somehow into the Concorde at later stages of the build so you don't lose them, as they'll be necessary if you ever feel like rebuilding the model or something. Then there's the angled sections for the nose and tail, the studs not on top techniques over load, and even the simple looking stand that most of the way we're building like this, not really understanding what's going on, needs to be turned at the last moment as we lay down the final pieces for a perfect looking angled build. This costs $200 for a little over 2000 pieces, but the value you get out of this set personally speaking, more than justifies the price. The model looks amazing, it has tons of prints, new elements and an unparalleled building experience. If you have the space and money to spare, this is without a doubt the best LEGO set of the year. And since it's on back order in most of the world, it'll probably take you a while until you can get your hands on one. That's how good of a LEGO model this is. I'll be reviewing the Harry Potter Gringotts Bank next, so keep an eye out for that and watch this video instead while you wait for it.